And this presentation is divided into five parts. First, I will start with general observation, then briefly theoretical overview, Sino-Europe multi-layered sub-national interactions, theory in practice, Citroen province, city of Guangzhou, and finally, I will stop with my city and Citroen province cooperation. Two years ago, I interviewed local bureaucrats in Guangzhou at the municipal level and at the provincial level of those who are dealing with foreign affairs, so-called foreign affairs at the local level. And I was really struggled by the fact that Guangzhou City is sponsored not only uh, bilateral relations based on sister cities uh, framework, but also they sponsor the triangle relations with Auckland and Los Angeles and multilateral um, relations with uh, European cities, namely Lyon, Frankfurt and Birmingham. So this is really fascinating new dynamic in international politics. And it reminds us of Hansa, when the port cities dictated principles rules. And that was uh, very, I mean, challenging to a certain extent that Guangzhou tried to follow this model and in case of central to central government conflict, like to uh, sponsor the principles of uh, um, foreign trade. I believe that that's a really a logic behind what was done by, uh, by Guangzhou municipal, uh, municipal government. Of course, we observe the growing role of subnational actors in international politics. Chen Jimin asked whether we are approaching new medievalism, cities association like Chengzhu Jingji Lianmeng. It's a very, as I mentioned, very interesting through shaping own norms, regulations, and also pressure on the central government and international institutions. And a very good example here is C40 cities. I mean, climate leadership group. If we, if we see the, uh, the interaction between California governor and central government in Beijing after Trump decided to withdraw from the Paris Treaty, it's very visible. The subnational level is very active in these cases. Chen Jimin mainly discussed it through a variety of frameworks, but from my perspective, the last one, multi di a diplomacy model, might be applied here. To seeing the central government, tensions over South China Sea, etc plus local-to-local -local interaction. Uh, he also mentioned new medievalism, as I mentioned, erosion of sovereignty and growing rule of cities and regions, question mark here, of course, when it comes to the future, uh, especially in this country. Uh, in the global governance structure, the central government failed to have monopoly. We could be very famous a political scientist, philosopher from Beijing mentioned, and also uh, a variety of concepts, but an interesting point here is that local uh, level was very beneficiary from international organization. So it brought uh, uh, the locality uh, as a real uh, important player in international politics. But when it comes to China, uh, I'm, I'm mainly researching the local authorities' role in China's foreign policy. The evaluation criteria are really important. I don't see these criteria in Europe, but when it comes to China, this um, this kind of system of evaluation of local governments is really more clear cut than in Europe. So the central government has a lot of expectations imposed on the local governments like trade volume, uh, limitation of um, CO2 uh, emissions, etc., etc., then evaluation. It's like in ancient China, it's like late Qing dynasty, I would say but definitely targets for local development plans sometimes imposed by the central government, then actions, international cooperation, and evaluation. Uh, I, will, I will just give one point here about uh, Kuznetsov model. Uh, we are talking about para-diplomatic activities, and he set up um, like uh, six criteria. Causes, uh, legal, mm, legal grounds, uh, motivations, institutions, central local governments, and final relations, and finally consequences. When it comes to the relations between China and Europe, I will say that in case of Chinese local governments, motivations are a really important factor. They, they need to, to show that, yes, we can meet the target, like trade volume, for example. When it comes to multi-level, uh, multi we have the bilateral level, strategic partnership when it comes to Sino-European relations, different political structure, of course, so Germany with federal system, then we have Poland with unitary system, then we have China with unitary system. 
Then we have sub-regional level, 16 plus 1, and European Union. And we have very strong voice of Committee of Regions. Uh, we need to acknowledge also that some uh, uh, policy, policy making process in European Union is also through this channel, Committee of Regions. When it comes to Poland, uh, our regional uh, platform is, is quite an interesting and we in my city exercise this to the fullest, I believe, that first time ever in uh, Sino-Polish history, the central government signed an agreement with uh, uh, local government in a higher education, but asymmetry here is very visible, but it was due to this strategic partnership and acknowledging that local governments are really a players on China's side and on our side. We lobby a lot, then finally the Minister of Higher Education and Science, a Vice Minister, signed an agreement uh, in higher education with Henan province. So it was very, very new dynamic in a sense of bilateral cooperation. When it comes to 16 plus 1, we've discussed it. 16 plus 1 is more about bilateral level cooperation. But still, we have this format when it comes to uh, local leaders' uh, meetings. Headquarters is in Prague. Uh, of course, besides recognize the importance of local governments, cooperation, mutual learning, exchange experience, trade, investment, culture, education. So from this perspective, local governments are more about kind of soft cooperation. The local level uh, does not talk about high politics. Uh, they, they simply uh, they don't touch South China Sea security issues, but trade, investment, a cultural exchange. And from this perspective, it might be quite an effective uh, effective pillar on, uh, co of cooperation between Europe. When it, when it comes to EU level, we have urban planning, a solution for cities, green urban mobility, not finances at this level, but what we can see sustainable energy solution for cities. So definitely this is really a real effective level. Then we have EU-China dialogue on smart cities. So very local level, but the local governments, as I mentioned, they, they simply don't touch high politics. When it comes to two cases, Sichuan and, uh, and, uh, Sichuan and Guangzhou, I struggle myself uh, how they perceive themselves in their relations with uh, Europe, for example. The Sichuan province calls itself as a checker in China's foreign policy. So we are a very important part of the whole project of Belt and Road. But of course we have a different interpretations here. Uh, my interpretations, that I, as I interviewed uh, bureaucrats, was you are not very important, guys. You, you're just uh, being played by the superior power. They said, no, we are the first. We are vanguard. We are the first line. So we are opening the game. So this is really interesting. Then I've learned that, well, the status is given by propaganda department. It's not a big issue. Come on, all, all, all written papers are about it. But Wang Yi, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, in a special meeting in Beijing, called uh, Sichuan as a pioneer of Belt and Road Initiative. So uh, that, that's the first point. Then what I realized from my research is that local governments has a special reserve funds for investments all across Belt and Road. And in Sichuan case, we have more than 100, uh, uh, 140 project projects with total investment of more than 1.2 uh, trillion renminbi. And of course they have a special leading group. Leading groups in China's politics are really important bodies. But definitely this is really interesting that not only at a central level you have this Sino-Europe uh, fund or uh, China CE fund or Belt and Road fund or whatever, but when it goes to the local level you have this local level Belt and Road a special reserve fund for, for investments. When it comes to priorities uh, uh, last year in Citroen policy, Europe is the first. This is a frequency of meetings with leaders from Europe. Czech Republic occupies the first place. Then you have Japan, United States, Nepal, Canada, Poland, Germany, Israel, Russia, Laos. But Europe is the first. So this is the most important destination of uh, so-called uh, Citroen's foreign, foreign activities. What is really important to, uh, to recognize is that Sichuan is operating uh, at the moment, sorry, via 251 original development project. Then you have Yangtze River Economic Belt. Then you have a special relations between Guangzhou and Sichuan through the, the kind of corridor. And on the other side, we have Poland, for example, 16 plus one in European Union. So from this perspective, 
Belden Road itself is a very local, uh, local oriented uh, kind of global project uh, because it's about uh, developing local economies like Sichuan economy and from Sichuan to Shanghai for this Yangtze River economic belt. So what I'd like you to, 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 to recognize that Belden Road itself is kind of extension of the domestic uh, uh, economic plans. Uh, like here we see uh, a 251 uh, project and a Yangtze River economic belt. When it comes to Guangzhou, as I mentioned, Guangzhou is very active. As a member of international organization like Metropolis, United Cities and Local Governments, as I mentioned, 2015, Guangzhou, Auckland, Los Angeles, and uh, finally the cities with Europe and also Chinese overseas. And if you go to web pages of uh, uh, Waiban, uh, this uh, international department, only single Guangzhou in the entire China has this Duobian, Duobian Hezuo, so multi, multilateral cooperation web page, special web page dedicated for multilateral cooperation like C40, as I mentioned, Metropolis and, and other uh, associations. But what struggled me a lot also from the documents published by the governments, uh, uh, Guangzhou municipal government, uh, we have categories of partners, and Europe occupies also very, very prominent place. Tampere, Frankfurt, and Bari. Fourth category, which is nowhere, so we are not important, we are just logistic head, but definitely what you can see, this categorization of partners at the local level. This is really fascinating story. I know I have one minute. Uh, the, the last case here, uh, my city and Chengdu, this is really important. And, uh, I think uh, 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 Li Yuan uh, should agree with me that the whole cooperation was about private business people. It wasn't stimulated by Bell and Road. It was stimulated by Foxconn, Hewlett Packard, and Dell. So definitely in my city there was a Dell company in Duisburg, Hewlett Packard. And everything started prior to Bell and Road. And what we currently see that Belden Road brought the new state-owned enterprises players. So it's more not about small medium enterprises, but rather uh, huge companies. Well, but uh, this is really interesting case, I believe. The private company started this cooperation. That uh, the my city government and region, regional government opened an office in Chengdu. Finally, Ministry of Foreign Affairs opened a consulate general there. So what we currently see is a bottom-up approach, not top-down. There was no, nothing like political signal from, uh, I don't know, Beijing or Warsaw, no. It was, this cooperation was stimulated by, uh, by private people. And up to 2015, this cooperation started uh, to be a more uh, institutionalized, uh, more central. And as you see here, uh, Chinese, Belarusian, German, Kazakh, Mongolian, Polish, Russian railway companies, national companies signed an agreement on deepening the rail freight cooperation and still division of labor, like categories. You are uh, like important hub, distribution center, representative office. So what I like about Belt and Road is that there is what we can see kind of cl more clear cut division of labor among players. Well, this is not a product placement uh, uh, presentation, but uh, the latest meeting between Vice Governor of Sichuan was sponsored by this producer. And we try to also sponsor some meeting, but we use milk uh, as a kind of vehicle for promotion our region. Uh, Luo Zugunian is a, a girl from uh, Lotsky region. So to conclude, I know that uh, I, I will take one minute more. So this is a very new, new issue, I think, in, in the research field. So I'm struggling also how to approach it. Public diplomacy, as Chinese discourse says, then subnational multilateralism, multilayered diplomacy model, and finally division of labor. So there are a lot of concepts when it comes to this kind of local to local interactions, but definitely uh, is a very important pillar when it comes to interaction between China and Europe, European, uh, European side. I see a Belt and Road from a slightly different perspective as a kind of political umbrella for both sides. We're using it as a kind of uh, political umbrella, but we, we're going we're gonna, to uh, see and we're going to face the, the asymmetrical challenge. China's province are bigger than European state. And I will stop here. Thank you for your attention.